Hello everyone, this is Amit. I am a PhD researcher in the COSIC group of Cable Leuven. In this video, I will be presenting our work of FSC22 entitled 123 Fork Counter Mode Variants based on a generalized fork cipher. It is a joint work with Elena Andreva, Damien Vizar, and Bart Pranil. The overview of this presentation is as follows. I will first briefly define and discuss about fork cipher and its generalization multi-fork cipher, dubbed as MFC. Then we will do a recap of encryption modes, specifically counter mode, as we all know that counter mode is used in many applications, ranging from random number generation, AAD schemes, to network security protocols like TLS or IPsec. Uh, clearly then it is a good target of research for further improvements in terms of both security and efficiency. I will then define the generalization of counter mode, dubbed as GCTR, and we'll drive you through our exhaustive study of all possible simple GCTR variants. This includes existing counter-like variants or counter-like modes, uh, like counter in tweak, counter dollar, or the traditional counter mode itself. Later, we will see an implication of this study. In particular, we will revisit the tweakable enciphering scheme called THCTR, and we'll see the impact of our study on the claim security of THCTR. I will then conclude the presentation with describing some use cases of GCTR in practice and some open problems or possible directions for future research. Let's start. So yeah, Fox cipher is a tweakable cipher that takes an input block M, tweak T, and key K as input and returns two output blocks C0 and C1 from the same space as the input M, as output. Fox cipher was introduced in ASAC 2019 by Andrew Ideal and was also uh, a second round candidate of testlet with competition. The security of Fox cipher is defined by its indistinguishability from a pair of random permutations under chosen cipher text attack. This notion is dubbed as PRTFP and the adversary advantage is informally as defined here. Now, a multi-fork cipher can be seen as a generalization of fork cipher in terms of the number of outputs. So instead of re returning two output blocks, a multi-fork cipher will return as many output blocks, where S is an external parameter that uh, corresponds to the number of branches of multi-fork cipher. Similarly, the security of a multi-fork cipher is analogously defined by its indistinguishability from an S tuple of random permutations under chosen cyprotex attack, and the notion is dubbed as BRD MFP with an uh, informal adversary advantage defined as here. Let us now talk about counter mode and its generalization GCTR. Traditional counter mode was introduced more than four decades ago. It is a block cipher based mode of operation and is also part of NIST standards for block cipher encryption mode. Counter mode has quite many properties that makes it important or better choice over other standards, like CBC mode, for example, in certain settings. So to exemplify, let's have a look at the table. If you see in this table, you will find that counter mode can provide many additional properties, like full parallelizability support, or primitive inverse free decryption properties like pre-processing support or padding free encryption and many more this makes a uh, counter mode a really good choice for encryption however i would like to point this out that although it provides so many uh, uh, good properties it can only provide but the security which if put in a simple words means that for a block cipher like as128 one can only get a security of 64 bits and that is that is quite low and also that too only in nonce respecting setting that means when uh, the nonce uh, input of the uh, counter mode is unique every time but 64 bit is not enough uh, and nowadays in many applications and forcing or ensuring nonce repetition is also not difficult in devices that are mobile or cheap or not well maintained for example iot devices small iot devices so the first question that comes in mind is can we come up with a with a or some counter like modes that provide 
all these desired properties of counter but also add more in terms of both security and efficiency when an existing work of uh, Perry and Shurin uh, from Crypto 16 gives partial answer to this question by providing a counter-like mode called counter in tweak that is based on a tweakable block cipher and improves the security of counter in some cases. But in this work, we target to fully answer this question by defining a generic counter mode based on multi fork cipher and then performing an exhaustive analysis to filter out uh, best counter-like modes that excel in both security and efficiency. So in this slide, I'll define GCTR and simplify it to make it easier to understand or to compare it with counter mode. So in this slide, as you can see, uh, GCTR can clearly be seen as a generalization of counter mode where uh, the key stream is generated using a framework called T TCTR, tweakable CTR framework, that takes two sequences. One is a tweak sequence and other is a input sequence as input and gives a key stream V as output. This key stream, just like counter mode, is then exerted with the message to generate the ciphertext. So if you zoom into the TCTR framework, this is how the TCTR framework will look like. It consists of multiple uh, multi fork cipher calls. And the input to the TCTR framework, which is two sequences of uh, inputs X and inputs to uh, T, uh, are separated and uh, block by block are used here uh, for each multi fork cipher call as their input and the tweak argument and uh, are used to generate the corresponding outputs which are concatenated to generate the final key stream so going back to the main uh, gctr mode we can simplify the mode like this so as you can see here uh, it takes tweak sequence t in x gives an key stream v XOR with methods m and gives separate x c if you put in a box, a message goes inside and a ciphertext comes out. Here are the additional inputs and additional outputs. So if there is a nonce used, that goes with the input. And if there's an internal randomness that is used to generate the ciphertext or to randomize the ciphertext, let's say, then that randomness is also required to be put as output. So we have R here as the output. So clearly this function T, uh, the tweak function and the function for X, uh, the input function fx and ft are uh, in in a simple cases uh, will be generated using uh, the remaining argument remaining uh, inputs like n or the internal randomness r or some counter j we now define some rules to uh, define these functions fx and ft efficiently uh, we call them uh, uh, efficient gtr variants and these rules are basically just uh, by saying that out of these three inputs, as you can see, n, r, and j, uh, this ft or fx can only be either a concatenation of any of these two arguments, or an XOR of them, any of two arguments, or a copy of either of those three arguments, or just a constant function, this could be zero or any constant, which is independent of these three variables. And the second rule is that if FT already has one of these three inputs, FX is not allowed to have the same because that makes no sense. It will not add anything in terms of security and either in efficiency. So these two simple rules are good uh, to filter out simple DCTR variants or say efficient DCTR variants. And uh, if one calculate them, we can see easily that there are total 36 possible variants that follows these two rules. Uh, I would also like to note that uh, these 36 variants, the simple GCTR variants, also include the traditional counter mode, the counter dollar mode, and also the counter tweak mode uh, from the work of Perry and Surin. Let us now recall the security notion called nice security for encryption schemes that follow the syntax of nonsense IV based encryption. This notion was introduced by Perry and Surin in Crypto 2016 and is the same notion that has been used for the analysis of uh, counter and tweak mode. Informally, this notion says that uh, an encryption scheme, a naive encryption scheme, that is a non and IV based encryption scheme, is um, uh, naive secure if it is indistinguishable from a random function, where the random function's output is uh, um, variable and depends on the input message length. Uh, here in the naive, as you can see, uh, naive stands for non respecting 
setting and I stands for nonce reusing. So to combine them, we use the bracket uh, abbreviation. In this work, we have performed an exhaustive security analysis of uh, all 36 simple GCTR variants under the knife security notion. We have performed this security analysis using the TCTR abstraction, the TCTR framework abstraction. And since the TCTR framework is a generic framework that does not specify or say anything about the particular variant, uh, the proof is also generic and uh, a compact. So in a generic and compact proof, we try to analyze all 36 modes. Our proof is based on uh, patterns as coefficient technique, and our results uh, in a summary uh, shows as you can see here, so that uh, 18 out of 36 modes are insecure under knife security notion. The remaining 18 are at least but the secure, which bounds better than counter mode. So when I say better than counter mode, their bounds has uh, a terms that are uh, that grows slower uh, or uh, are uh, limitedly uh, controlled by the adversary than the original counter mode. And this original counter mode is not included in these 18 secure. Uh, variants because counter mode does not provide uh, security in uh, non reusing settings. So, when I say 18 secure modes, they are secure under both um, uh, non suspecting and non misusing settings with uh, different degradations, different security degradations. And out of these 18 uh, secure variants, there are three that are beyond birthday secure. That means they provide security beyond the birthday bound. They are namely GCTR 1, 3, and 7. So for the following few slides, let me uh, get a bit more technical, or so to say more formal to build up the stage for our uh, found results. And don't worry, after describing the formal results, I will briefly also explain what they actually mean uh, in practice. So you can see here, um, the first expression here shows uh, the adversary advantage, uh, an adversary that is, uh, uh, trying to break the knife security of uh, GCTR variant, let's call it GCTR Z, where Z is the name of the variant, the number of the variant. And uh, for that adversary, we are trying to upper bound this adversary advantage uh, of breaking the knife security of that variant. And uh, the advantage is upper bounded by uh, two terms. The first is the um, a term that refers to the pseudo-random two-cable multifork permutation security of the underlying multifork cipher. Uh, and an additional degradation that comes from the mode, the GCTR mode itself. So this degradation vary uh, variant by variant. So now in this small table below, you can see um, the beyond but the bound secure GCTR variants with their corresponding functions ft, like how the tweaks are defined for the underlying TCTR framework, function fx, the input sequence are defined for the underlying tweakable CTR framework, the degradation when x is 1, that is when nonce is uh, uh, always unique, that is nonce respecting setting. Uh, for example, applications where uh, nonce is defined as the state, which is maintained and uh, ensured as unique every time, or uh, nonce is somehow ensured to be unique. And the last column is for cases where nonce is uh, misused or um, reused or, or forced to be reused, and uh, the degradation corresponds to the the security of uh, that corresponding variant under nonce misuse setting. Clearly, the security in the nonce respecting setting is uh, better uh, than nonce misuse setting for any GCJ variants. Or to put it in the other way, uh, the adversarial advantage of breaking the knife security of any GCJ variant is lower in a nonce respecting setting than in nonce misuse setting. But uh, more concretely, if you see here, uh, yeah, if you see here, the highlighted column shows that when nonce is misused, even when nonce is misused, GCTR3 can provide security which is higher than birthday bound. If you see, it's a uh, that the bound shows that the security is in birthday of n plus t, and if t is quite large or non zero, let's say, then the security could be uh, beyond birthday in n. And uh, on the other hand, when uh, the nonce is uh, respected by the adversary, that is, the nonce is unique every time, uh, GCTR7 gives uh, information theoretic uh, security for uh, for a generic counter mode, uh, which means uh, that is which means that the GCTR7 has no additional degradation than whatever that comes from the underlying primitive uh, primitives PRTMFP security. 
Additionally, if you see to the last uh, row in this slide, that's GCTR20, uh, a person who knows counter mode can easily see that this is just a counter mode with when S is equal to one. That is when uh, the underlying uh, uh, multi fork cipher is uh, uh, instantiated with S equal to one. That is kind of a tweakable block cipher with tweak fixed to gamma. Gamma could be any constant. Let's fix it to zero. Then we get uh, counter mode. And counter mode is insecure in uh, a non submissive setting, but gives you a birthday security in non suspecting setting. And clearly, the other variants are better than counter mode, although they give just birthday security, they have bounds that are uh, not as, uh, they don't grow as fast as uh, counter mode. These plots show the adversarial advantage as functions of the number of block queries made by the adversary or the number of maximum non repetitions used by the adversary you can see this plot as a visualization of the data that i showed before in tables so the first plot here the plot a basically uh, shows that when uh, the setting is not respecting x equal to one that is when adversary is not allowed to repeat the nouns gctr7 has no additional degradation as you can see here the the gtr7 curve is um, a straight line parallel to x axis never meets the x axis. So, whatever number of um, block query adversary makes, it can never get any uh, a high advantage. However, for this counter mode and GTA 3, this is not the case, and they are an upper bound on number of queries after which the adversary can uh, break the scheme. But we can note that for the GTA 3, this uh, uh, number of queries, this number of uh, block queries is very high. Uh, and uh, that explains that in non-suspecting setting, uh, GCTR3 gives you higher security than this counter mode. And, and, and to be concrete, it's a, a beyond birth security, even up to uh, full n bit security, depending on the tweak size. If you see plot B, where uh, we set x to not equal to 1, to be something larger than 1, that is when the nonce can be misused. This is a moderate case where nonce is misused to root sigma many times, where sigma is the number of block queries. Then uh, you can see even if nonce is misused for a, one more time, like, like x is equal to 2, the security degradation, uh, the additional degradation for, for the sheet 7 is, uh, is high, and, and the sheet 7 security comes down to birthday in n, you can see here. And that's the same case for the sheet 3 as well, when the tweak size is uh, up to n bits. But for, for larger tweaks, we can still get higher security with GCTR3. The last plot, plot C here, shows uh, address advantage as a function of uh, maximum number of notch repetitions uh, used by the adversary. And we can see for a higher number of notch repetitions, uh, the security degrades uh, faster. And uh, even, with, even with that, uh, the GCTR3 with higher uh, tweak, with, with larger tweak size, we get uh, a better uh, security. Uh, degradation security degrees slower than the other variants so to summarize we can say that gctr7 is the best gctr variant best simple gctr variant in terms of security uh, for non-respecting setting despite of whatever the tweak size is and also for non misuse setting but when the tweak size is either upper bounded by n or if it's beyond n then the number of maximum non repetitions allowed for the adversary is upper bounded by this term here, where sigma is the number of block queries, the number of multi fox hyper queries, and the Q is the number of message queries made by the adversary. And otherwise, GCTR3 is the best GCTR variant in terms of security. I would also like to point out that GCTR3, when instantiated with S equal to one, that is the underlying MFC is instantiated with a tweakable block cipher, reduces to counter in tweak mode, However, our generic proof provides security bound that improves upon the original counter and tweak bound. And in particular, it improves uh, the original bound from uh, being an order of sigma square to an order of Q sigma, which says that counter and tweak provides stronger security guarantees than what has been claimed in original paper. More concretely, it says when average message length is longer, counter and tweak can provide higher security guarantee. Let us now look at an implication of this work, or so to say an observation, as a consequence of this uh, GCTR work and the generic security analysis. 
two applications that use a counter alike component inside to achieve something greater. In the particular, we target this uh, enciphering scheme called Tukable HCTR, THCTR, which uh, claims to be a beyond birthday bound secure uh, TSPRP uh, scheme. However, uh, after a careful look, we realized that uh, it uses a counter like component that uh, uh, looks alike the GCTR4 variant from the 36 uh, simple variants that has been analyzed in our work. And GCTR4, as we know, are, has been has only been shown but they won't secure. We investigated this inconsistency and realized that TLCTR's beyond birthday bound security claims are incorrect. More specifically, the bottleneck of the security degradation is the GCTR4-like component that is used internally by TLCTR. We also provide a birthday bound attack to invalidate the current bound of TLCTR and point to the exact flaw, the exact bad kit analysis. In the security proof of TSCTR. An easy fix to uh, this uh, gap could be replacing the GSCTR, GCTR 4 like component by GCTR 3 or GCTR 7 to get the beyond but they bound security. As I described earlier, that security was the not only concern, and security and efficiency both were uh, together targeted uh, with MFC in mind. MFC itself, uh, due to its expanding nature, will bring uh, speed up to the, the cipher evaluation and hence could also bring speed up to the whole mode evaluation. In this slide, we provide the efficiency comparison of GCTR mode with the other counter alike modes like counter mode itself or the counter in tweak mode. For GCTR, we instantiated it S equal to 2 because the only MFC instance is, in, is a fork cipher with uh, two outputs and uh, the fork cipher we instantiate with fork skinny and you can see in this plot that uh, the, for the y-axis where the number of rounds required are shown to process the number of queried bytes on x-axis this dctr mode performs uh, quite better than the other two where the other two counter and counter and tweak mode are instantiated with skinny and uh, more specifically uh, the red line shows that the CTR mode requires fewer number of rounds to process a particular number of queried bytes than the other two. And uh, in numbers, the CTR is, provides at least 20% of speed up uh, than the other two. I would like to point out that uh, this speed up of 20%, or in general, the speed up is uh, uh, not specific to a GCTR variant. It's the same for all GCTR variants because they all follow the same GCTR framework. So to summarize, in this work, we have presented a generic counter mode over the abstraction of multi fork cipher that provides all desirable properties of counter mode, but with some extra uh, that in terms of both security and efficiency. To enumerate in terms of security, we get uh, security against nonce misuse, misusing adversaries, or a security bounce beyond the birthday barrier, or sometimes the full n bit security. And in terms of efficiency, particular to uh, GCTR instantiated with MFC S equal to 2, fork cipher with fork skinny, we get uh, uh, efficiency gain of at least 20% uh, when compared with counter or counter and tweak mode instantiated with uh, tweakable block cipher skinny. Let us now talk about uh, some use cases of generic counter mode in practice. There are various ways a generic counter mode can be used, and two of two important of them are as follows. The first one is when uh, uh, an application requires only encryption and uh, a nonce misuse resistance is desirable there. To exemplify, consider microcontrollers that are embedded with uh, two random number generators but with constrained RAMs and they want to stream sensor data and they have uh, this possibility of nonce repetition. And there we need uh, an encryption scheme that can provide nonce misuse resistance. So GCTR can fit there. And this data can also be used as building blocks to large crypto systems, as we already saw uh, in the example of the enciphering scheme TSCTR. And also there are AAD schemes that uh, are based on either the composition paradigm of encrypt then Mac or the synthetic IV setting like SCT that uses an encryption scheme inside. So this data can be a useful uh, component there that provides beyond but the bound security. I would also like to point out 
that as we know, uh, GCTR gives better security and efficiency when compared with counter mode, but it uh, requires slightly larger bandwidth and, and uh, that is because uh, of uh, uh, processing both nonce and IV. But in applications uh, where the counter-like mode is used as a building block, and uh, the IV part is uh, sometimes generated internally using the input, uh, we call it a synthetic IV. Uh, this extra bandwidth and randomness cost of GCTR can be averted easily, and we can get uh, uh, the security and efficiency advantage of GCTR without paying this cost of extra bandwidth. I would now like to point out some possible future research directions and open problems that are raised uh, and are left open by this research work. The first one would be to design new secure and efficient fork ciphers and multi fork ciphers with branches at least two. This could be considered as a as a good opportunity uh, in crypto community uh, after seeing uh, um, the versatile structure or nature of multi fork cipher as it can be used to improve security and efficiency both in a certain symmetric modes. And with that being said, uh, the second possible reset direction could be uh, designing novel multi fork cipher based modes that are not limited to uh, the use cases of encryption or authentication encryption, but can also be used in various other security settings. There are certain preliminary results that shows that uh, multi fork ciphers can be uh, uh, good to be used in Max or uh, used for randomness extraction as well as uh, for some privacy preserving applications. With such good open problems being stated, we are at the end of this presentation. Thank you for listening to this video of our work. May the fourth be with you all. Bye.